Good morning, Facebook. Happy Sunday. Ooh, I have a missed call. Who called me? Um, it's going to be hot here today in New York. It's like 10 o'clock and it's already almost 85 degrees. <clears throat> I've got my iced tea to help keep me cool. Um, I'm still sort of waking up. I slept in this morning. And getting ready for my Sunday soul expansion group, which I love. It's always one of my favorite things to do. It's one of my... Um, really has become one of the most joyful experiences in my work. And most, you know, it's interesting because most of my work is joyful in some way to me. Um, you know, yesterday I spent um, the day working on the syllabus and the outlines and the content and the handouts for my London classes coming up next weekend. Um, and then also had a meeting with um, the guy in LA that I'm working with who's going to produce my online courses and we had a great um, sort of strategy development meeting, um, you know, taking the content that I have been using in sessions and in private sessions and group sessions and turning it into courses so that, um, you know, more people can benefit from it and finding ways to make the content more universal, to make it something that, you know, um, more people have access to um, because I get it, you know, my one-on-one my -on -one sessions are fairly expensive for a lot of people and so not everyone has the financial resources to, to get a private session with me. So I've been wanting to, good morning Elizabeth, I've been wanting to find a way to how can I reach more people. And that's part of why I started doing the group work too was, you know, if it's 20 bucks for um, a session or 20 or twenty dollars for a soul expansion call or 25 or whatever or 40 dollars for, you know, when I start doing live events or whatever it is, you know, I wanted to find a way that it wasn't cost prohibitive for people to access me and the work that I do. So it's super exciting, but I started thinking this morning, you know, I think that one of the most challenging things, and this is the point of this video today, I think that one of the most challenging things, and I see this all the time with my clients and with people in, in, that I work with in groups, is <clears throat> people have an idea of what they want you know, because in the end, we all kind of want the same thing, right? We want to feel safe in our life. We want to feel free. We want to feel joyful. We want to feel, you know, inspired. We want to feel motivated and happy in our life. We want to feel good in our skin. We want to feel, you know, that we are at home and content within our experience. You know, of course, that doesn't mean there aren't going to be challenging days or difficult days. But, you know, to generally have this life that feels more like paradise, and you can have it. Um, and I think I'm living proof of that. Um, and there's a million different ways you can do it and ultimately the way that works for you is the way that works for you and I think one of the biggest challenges that many of us face is that there is no there's no real plan for how to live a life that is built on freedom to how, how to live a life that is authentic and true because let's face it we don't live in a world where that has really been elevated and we don't really see many models of that and that's part of what my radio show is going to be about. The, the um, first episode's on the 22nd of June. Um, there's actually now a tab on my website, a radio tab. So if you go to thelightedones.com, you click on the radio tab, you'll see all the upcoming shows. But the point of this is, is that, you know, I think that we live in a world where, you know, finding your own truth and letting your truth lead you to your purpose and really honoring that and finding a way to serve that, whatever that is. We don't live in a world where that has really been elevated. We have been li we live in a world where that has been seen as the exception, right? Only the lucky few really get to do what they love. Only a small handful of people who are favored or blessed or whatever really get to do what they love. And I don't think that that's true. I think that that has been true, certainly historically in the past. But I think that part of what is happening on the planet right now is these energies are coming in to assist us in moving towards that truth and moving towards that purpose and finding a way to honor that and to live from that and to really create a life that's built around that. A life in service of your truth, a life in service of your purpose. And I think one of the scariest things for many of us, and I know that this was for me, you know, or several years ago when I first really started in earnest, started, um, started moving down this path and I think that one of the hardest things for me was okay I know what I want right I want to be joyful I want to be self-employed and self-employed really just meant freedom really is what self-employed means I want to be happy I want to inspire people I want to you know be creative I want you know all of these things but how do you do that 
right? There's no real plan. I can't go to the bank and say, please give me $50,000 so that I can inspire people. You know what I mean? Everyone wants a plan and everyone's looking at it from the lens of the mind. Everyone wants the ABC and one, two, three. And even we in our own life oftentimes say, well, I have this idea and I'm inspired to do these things, but how am I going to pay my bills and how am I going to eat and how am I going to, you know, put food on the table? So I understand the separation between the, the desire of the heart and the, the impulse of the heart and the inspiration of the heart and then the very real world human experience of okay, but how do I make this a thing, right? How do I turn this into something practical that supports me and serves me in my life? So here is a way that I have found that can help us start to do that. Because this is what I know to be true, is that freedom is freedom. Joy is joy. Love is love. It doesn't matter if it's the freedom that comes from, you know, being able to decide if I want chocolate or vanilla, or the freedom that comes from being able to wake up in the morning and have a life that I've created that where I'm self-employed and I get to say yes or no basically to whatever I want when it comes to my professional life and really my life in general. So, but the vibration of freedom, the feeling of freedom, the sense that comes physically and emotionally and energetically from the experience of freedom is the same. It's the same. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, two seconds of being able to, the freedom of choosing chocolate or vanilla, or a lifetime of being able to choose based upon what you do for a living. Because we oftentimes get stuck in the big, the mind thinks, well, oh, I think I have a sneeze coming. <coughs> Excuse me. The mind thinks, well, how does choosing chocolate or vanilla help me pay the bills and put a roof over my head? How does that help me create a business or create a plan? And so I get it. The mind is always going to undersell. The mind is always going to try to be the skeptic and try to just say, no, don't worry, don't do it. It's, you know, the mind is always going to be the one that tries to keep you, help to hold, to hold you back. So here's how to practically begin to make these choices because, and I've talked about this, if you've done a one-on-one -on -one session with me, I've talked about this in this, this concept called the emotional architecture, which is a tool that I share a lot with my clients. And it's based upon this idea that the only reason we ever choose anything is because of how we think it will make us feel. And so when we focus on the feeling first, we begin to create a container for our life where we show up and we say, okay, no matter what, I'm choosing freedom today. Sorry, it's really loud today. I have to have the window open because it's so hot in here. If I don't have the window open, then I'll be a sweaty mess. <laughs> so here's how to actively begin to create change in your life based upon what you want. So this is what I'm going to challenge you to do this week. For the next seven days, I'm going to challenge you to identify one thing that you want more of in your life. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's freedom. Maybe it is love. And if you get stuck on a thing, because a lot of us may say, well, I want more money, or I want a boyfriend, or I want a house. Okay, those are viable. It's sort of a law of attraction, Melissa, but this is deeper. This is putting it into action. How, what does money represent, right? So when you get stuck on a thing, if it's a house or money or a husband or a girlfriend or whatever, think, okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with wanting a thing. Things are important. Things are part of the human experience. There's nothing wrong with wanting money. I love money. But what does money represent? Does money represent safety? Does money represent freedom? Does money represent joy? What does a relationship represent? Does it re represent unity? Does it resent, represent the, the um, feeling of being at peace? What does a house represent? Safety? Um, does it represent um, you know stability? So if you find yourself this week getting stuck on a thing, Think below the thing and try to figure out for yourself what does the thing represent. So identify one. Let's say it's freedom. We'll just use that as the example. What I want you to do this week, and if you have to write it on a post-it and put freedom on your dashboard or on your computer screen or on you know your mirror in the bathroom or wherever, pick whatever the thing is that you're going to choose. This is about staking a claim for this in your life. Because when you show up and you choose the thing that you have identified that you desire to see in your life, and you show up and you say, Spirit, I don't care how it happens, I don't care what happens, no matter what, I'm going to choose freedom as often as I can this week because Spirit only responds to the vibration of what you're experiencing. It's not about so much what you think, it's not so much about what you do, it's not so much about what you choose. Yes, those things are a part of it, but the predominant response that you get from your experience is based upon how you feel. 
So, freedom. You decide freedom. So what I want you to do is you are going to be a treasure hunter for freedom or joy or love or creativity or whatever the thing is, is that you identified you want more of in your life. And you are gonna find a way to choose freedom as often as you can every single day. And if freedom is as simple as, <clears throat> And here's where it gets fun because you can make it super, super simple. Maybe freedom is I get to choose to go to work a new way today. I can take the bus or I can walk or I can take the train or I can hitch a ride or I can take a cab. I take, I have the freedom to go to a grocery store and I am lucky enough to live in a world where I have the freedom of a hundred different kinds of breakfast cereal or a hundred different kinds of fruits and vegetables or whatever it is. So finding a way to choose whatever it is that you have said you want more of in your life starting now because you are the one that is responsible for choosing it. You are the one that is responsible for calling more of it into your life and claiming it and saying, look, the freedom of self-employment may not have anything to do with what I choose to eat for breakfast or how I choose to get to work, but what it does is it tells the universe that spirit, even in the smallest way, I am so ready for freedom that I am going to choose it in the teeniest, tiniest way. Because, and here's what I say all the time, you may think it's incremental, you may think it's insignificant, and you may think it's meaningless. And you may be watching this video and go, Andrew, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. How does the freedom of self-employment have anything to do with the freedom of what I choose to have for breakfast? Here's how. Because you have shown up and you have said, I am staking a claim on freedom no matter what. When you choose it for yourself first, you are guaranteed to get more of it. You know, so when you create the vibration of freedom, the universe says, oh my gosh, no matter what, Andrew chooses freedom. Even when it is apparent or when it would seem that there is no freedom there, right? Even when he has to look for the opportunity for freedom, he still manages to find it and he claims it for himself first. This is the truth. You're never going to get what you want until until you choose it for yourself. You know, we see this all the time on the planet. You know, people saying, you know, we want world peace, we want world peace. Where is, you know, people tell me, you know, ask me this, well, Andrew, if, do you believe, if there's a God, why would God allow all of these horrible things to happen? Why wouldn't God just come down and end suffering and give us world peace? And I say, why on earth would God give it to us? Because we can't even choose it for ourselves. We cannot go one day on this planet without calling for the death of someone or some group or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So when we find a way to choose it for ourselves first, we create a space where it can exist. If I am living from the belief that I am trapped and I am a prisoner of my experience and I have no freedom, what am I creating? An experience where I am trapped and I have no freedom. Freedom is not about physical circumstances. Freedom is about how do I feel in this moment and how can I find a sense of freedom that is present right now. And when I choose to create it regardless of my circumstances, that's when my circumstances rearrange themselves in response to what I am choosing. And over time, you choose it enough and the circumstances get bigger and the shifts are more powerful and it goes from being one little tiny grain of sand to something that's bigger and more tangible. If you think of it like a scale, and on this side of the scale is all the things that are not freedom, and on this scale there's nothing, right? So, but all I gotta do is pick one grain of sand of freedom and put it on the freedom side. Over time, all of those grains of sand begin to tip the scale in my direction. You have to be willing to choose what you want first. And then more of it begins to show up. And even if you start and say, I don't know, Man, and you say spirit, higher self, guides, angels, God, universe, whatever it is you, you ask things from or pray to or believe in, whatever that is, you say, show me how to find freedom right now. Show me how to access freedom today. Give me opportunities to choose freedom and I will because right now I don't even see it. So I want you to decide on one thing that you're gonna pick no matter what this week and then here's what your accountability is. Here's your homework. At the end of the day, at the end of each day, I want you to write, and you can get a journal or you can do it on your laptop, you can do it as a note on your phone, you can even just text it to yourself. I don't care how you document, document it. And you're going to sit and you're going to hold yourself accountable. And I want you to write at least three ways that you chose freedom or joy or love or belonging or whatever it is, that you chose it for yourself that day. And if you do at least three, and you do it every single day for the next seven days, by the end of the week, you're going to have 21 times that you have cho chosen, at least 21, right? Because you can do more than three. You can do 100 in one day if you can. 
begin to challenge yourself. You become a treasure hunter for the very thing that you seek. And when you choose it first, that's when you begin to send the vibration that says, hey, press release universe, hey, just so you know, I'm putting you on notice. Freedom is the thing that I'm choosing no matter what. And I'm choosing up, I'm showing up to choose it in a way where it feels like it's not even there. It seems like it's not even present. And I still manage to find a way to do it. You know, it feels incremental. It feels insignificant. But this is what I would pose to you is consider if you've been walking through the desert for three days with no water, even a drop feels like paradise. So it's not about the quantity. It's not about the size. That's the head. That's the mind. The mind is saying, well, this is stupid. How does this change anything? And the mind, you know, whatever mind you're, you're, you're <laughs> bigger is not always better. You, you know, it's this ego based thing. I'll believe it when I see it. And the heart says, no, I can show you a way where you can begin to choose it now. And when you choose it, you instantly create the experience of it. And when you choose it again and you choose it again and you choose it again, the experience of it gets bigger and takes on more weight and takes on more gravity and takes on more power. And before you know it, it is pulling more of that which it is to itself like attracts like so the more I choose freedom the more I begin to see it show up in my experience and then the universe says oh my god all Andrew wants is freedom so here's more freedom what about this does this feel like freedom do you like this what about this and I go yes yes no yes yes more of that less of that thank you no thank you and you become the selector of your experience so this is how we begin to choose the experience that we want this is how we begin to make our life shift magically before our eyes. You know, I say this all the time that when you book, and I, I, this is on my website, that when you book a session with me, I can give you ways to begin to shift your circumstances starting today, now, in this hot second. And this is what I'm giving you. This is the way you begin to create it. So for the first week, you choose one thing, freedom. The next week, say, you say, hey, let's do joy. The next week, you say, hey, let's do creativity. Hey, let's so you find a way to be the very thing that you want as often as you can and then you show yourself at the end of the day by doing your documentation of it and you give yourself evidence, you give yourself proof and you say, you know what, it was teeny teeny tiny but I found a way to find freedom and I chose it today, I chose it three times and look, now seven days later, there were at least 21 times when I showed to myself that freedom was already present within my experience. This is an example. There was a period when I was having a lot of difficulty with money and abundance and I was finding a really really difficult time of you know finding abundance in my life you know money seemed to be scarce I didn't feel like the unlimited flow was coming to me and I was like what the fuck I don't know what's going on so what I did is I went to a mall this is when I was living in Seattle I went to a mall and I went every single because you know when you walk through the mall everyone's trying to give you a sample oh do you want to try some tea today oh do you want to try some you know whatever bread today oh do you want to try this frappuccino thing whatever it is like so I went through the mall and there was like a food court and then there was a Starbucks and then there was a tea place and then there was a, a place that had look I went through and I found as many free samples I found as many free tastes I found as many free things as I could get and by the I'm telling you I was there for like 45 minutes maybe an hour by the end of that hour I had so many samples in my pockets I had tasted so many little sips of tea or chocolate or frappuccino or bread or sausage or whatever it was and I proved to myself that the abundance that I sought, I went in there with a mindset saying abundance doesn't exist, I don't have what I need, nothing comes for free, nothing comes easy, I was stuck in the idea of struggle. That simple exercise shifted everything for me and I thought, you know what, how many times in my life have I walked through the shopping mall and someone has tried to give me a free sample, hey do you want this for, and I've said no. Now that might seem really insignificant, but what it did is it set off a light bulb in my head to say, oh, how do I know what abundance looks like? Clearly I don't because I don't have it in my life. And here are these very simple ways that the universe has been showing up to try to give me free stuff and I've been saying no to it. It was a very minor thing and it was very insignificant. And no, a free sample of tea or of lotion or whatever is not going to help me pay my bills or pay my rent. But what it did was it opened me up to the possibilities and the truth that abundance was everywhere. Abundance is inherent in the experience. The sun shines, we breathe oxygen, you know, the grass grows, the trees blossom, the water flows. All of that is the abundance of the experience that we live in. And what it did was it helped me begin to consciously tap into the abundance that was already present. 
So that's my challenge for you this week, is identify one thing today that you want to see more of in your life, and then you become a treasure hunter for it. You become fucking Indiana Jones looking for those things in your own experience, and then hold yourself accountable at the end of each day to show to yourself and to write down three ways and three times in that day that you chose it, even when your mind was trying to tell you that it wasn't present. So that's it. I'm getting ready for the soul expansion call. I'm going to finish my iced tea. God, it's so hot here already. It feels like it's 100 degrees. <laughs> so I hope you have a happy, happy Sunday. Um, I hope maybe I'll be checking in with you next week. Maybe not Sunday because I'll be in London doing my, my workshop. But maybe next Monday I can check in and hold you guys accountable and see if you did your homework and find out how, not if, how. You identified at least three times a day to choose and to claim the thing that you want more of. Because you say you want more of it, and this is what happens. We say we want more of it, and then we oftentimes just sit and wait for it to be delivered. The universe is not fucking Santa Claus, my friend. You've got to show through your actions and your choices and your beliefs that what you want, you really are choosing, and you're staking a claim to it. That is your responsibility. You've got to show up and say, you know what? I may not see it, but I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to dig. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find freedom in my experience, even when it feels like it's not even here. And that's when things begin to turn. You are, this is the truth, you are owed nothing. You are owed nothing. The universe owes you nothing. You have a life. You have an opportunity. You have a body and a brain and a heart and a soul and a spirit and air breathing you know, in and out of your lungs. That's what you have. You've been given that. So the rest of it is up to you. You are owed nothing. You are getting, you, your experience is always a reflection of what you believe is possible. So choose something new. Begin to prove to yourself how the impossible or what the mind is telling you can't be. You know what? I don't believe you mind. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove to you how wrong you are by finding at least three things every day, three ways that I can choose the very thing that I say I want more of. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a happy Sunday. I'll see some of you in Soul Expansion in just a couple of hours. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.